Dylan Tubi, Progressive Soccer. These are some soccer drills for kids, soccer drills for players of any age really to improve your first touch, your passing, your control, your confidence on the ball, and your sharpness. You may have saw a video I released recently where I did similar drills with a 14 year old girl. Here I'm training with a 10 year old boy. As you can see, it doesn't matter the age. And guys, it doesn't matter so much about the drill. It's the way you approach the drill. You can have the most simple drill, but if you approach it with intensity and quality, you're going to get something out of it. So when you're sending me messages asking me, what drill should I do? I don't really care so much. It's more how you do it. Approach everything you do with intensity, with quality, with the desire to improve, and you're going to get something out of it. So I'll take you through these touch drills. First one we did was inside of the foot. Here is outside of the foot, passing drill. Focus on the movement in between. Don't just side skip. Don't just jog from cone to cone. I want that quick, sharp lateral movement, getting low to the ground, bending the knees when you change direction. Here we did a combination of the two, so passing, with one foot at a time, but on one side I'm using inside, on the other side I'm using outside of the foot. So we're really developing that confidence using the outside of the foot. I love that touch. I've talked about it before. I'll keep talking about it and you'll see the progression in my own technique as well as the players that I train really developing that outside of the foot pass. In the beginning it's going to be awkward for you. You're going to have to learn how to flex your foot. Most people don't even have the ability, the strength, the mobility to flex their foot and pass with the outside of the foot. But the more you practice, the more it'll come, the more confidence you will get. Next we moved into some two touch drills here. I'm receiving with the outside of the foot with a touch heavy enough to get past the cone, but not so heavy that I lose possession. So really focusing on the quality of that first touch, making the weight of that first touch perfect. When you're playing in games, when you're playing in matches, training, it's not good enough just to touch your, to have your first touch go in the direction that you want. Really focus on getting that precise weight so the ball travels exactly where you need to. So you can play a pass first time or you can play a pass with your second touch. You can release a shot quickly. You can dribble past the defender. You can get past the defender with your first touch. So it's not good enough just to have a first touch. What are you doing with the first touch? Where does it go? What is the specific weight paying attention to those details receiving the ball in different ways as you can see there's a hundred different ways you could do these little touch drills with two simple cones and realistically you don't even need a cone but the cone are good guides to make sure that your weight of touch is proper and your movement is sharp enough you're moving from side to side so after these touch drills going into some more aerial stuff but again focus on the quality of your technique, the quality of your passing, but also the quality in the way that you move. We're always focused on what we do with the ball. I want you to focus on what you do with your body. How do you move? Is your movement getting sharper each time? Not just the quality of your touch is your technique. Is the quality of your movement getting better each time? Approach it with that mentality, you're gonna improve so much faster. Here we're doing a half volley, so right after the bounce, putting that ball back into your partner's hands. And as I said in the other video, it's not good enough just to pass it in their general direction. Put it right in their hands so they don't even have to move their hands. They don't have to reach up. They don't have to bend down. Put it right in their hands every single time. Here we're moving into uh, air volley or full volley with the inside of the foot. And again, you could do these with any. You could do outside of the foot. You could do with the laces. But here we're just doing with the inside of the foot, really focusing on making flush contact. So whenever I'm doing passes, even ground passes, I'm asking myself, was that pure contact? Did I hit it right on the spot? And you know the difference. You know the difference when you have a good pass and a pass that maybe is okay, but it didn't feel the same. I want you to notice that feeling of a flush pass. How does it feel? Try to replicate that feeling every time you make a pass, whether it's on the ground or in the air. Here we're doing a two touch, just varying the throws, sometimes to the chest, sometimes to the feet, sometimes to the thighs. Just focusing on a quick two-touch, controlling the ball, being unpredictable with your service, forcing the player to stay on their toes and react quickly. No excuses. If it comes to your head, if it comes to your toes, if it comes to your feet, you need to control the ball. And that's a mentality that I have and one that I want you to have as well. If someone passes me the ball, whether they ping it at me 100 miles an hour or it's coming in nice and light, if it's in my general direction, in my sphere of control, anywhere around my body, 
I put it on myself, I should control it. I don't care how hard it's coming in. If they overhit it, if they underhit it, if they put it a little bit to my left or my right, it doesn't matter. If it's in my sphere of control, I am responsible for taking care of that ball. Last one we did here, we're just throwing it down into the ground, a little bit of air control, pushing out of your feet, controlling quickly, playing that pass back 